Video game hunting in Japan, there is no greater thrill. We went to Book Off, and already you can be like, everyone in Japan takes such good care of their items. They have original Famicom and Super Famicom video games with the box art. It's incredible. It's in pristine condition. Buckle up, nerds, we're going in. And hey, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and then click that bell icon so you'll be notified of whenever we upload. So what is your experience with Japanese games? Uh, they were always a, a sort of oddity to me. I think uh, the manual art and the art that would get reused in Nintendo Power was very impactful for me as a young artist and as a young wannabe designer. Like uh, the Zelda artwork. Uh, especially Zelda artwork, Katsu Tirada, mm -hmm. who, you know, is a, a tremendous artist. He did all that work. But, uh, you know, a lot of times these games were imported from Japan and they just kind of reuse Japanese art in the manuals. And it was such a treat because, let's be honest, in the 80s, you were not seeing fully fleshed out rendered characters. It was a couple dots on a screen. Yeah. And so your imagination was left to kind of make up what that character actually was or was doing or looked like. And then the manual art kind of helped that. Yes. I um, mean, perfect case example is uh, Mario. 100%. My first exposure to Japanese games and just being like confused by why is this cartridge shape different was uh, my cousins. They, you know, like to get the Japanese imported because they were able to play either games that never came to the States mm. or came to Japan first and got it imported. So we played Mario 3 in Japanese and I was just fascinated by, wait, this cartridge is yellow? I'm like, that was just amazing. It was mind blowing. And then you didn't get that again until say, Zelda 2 when the cartridge was gold. Right. One of the greatest places to visit in Japan if you're looking for video games and one of the largest collections in the world would be Sweet Potato. Sweet Potato in Akihabara. Is it just potato? Super Potato. Super Potato. In Akihabara. And each floor was like, this is just Famicom. The next one was insane. PlayStation and PS2 and it is organized so nicely. I get why there are collectors of international cartridges and game systems, right? Mm -hmm. I, I am brand new to this. I am just sort of learning this as we go along. There is so much to comprehend. It is really mind-blowing. So I, I, I'm just dipping my toe into this sort of collecting behavior, but I did pick up a couple things that I thought were really cool. While we're in Japan, in Nakano, there is this store called SF Department. And that's where the Toys to Art gallery show was happening below it. And you ended up finding a very rare Famicom oh, cartridge. Oh yeah, I don't know how rare it is over there, but we didn't get this game, I believe. No. Dragon Buster? Dragon Buster. I think this was just a Famicom exclusive that uh, was never translated over here. And I gotta be honest, I bought it because it's a shiny gold object. Perfect. And that's what I like. So we have no way to play this, but the cover art is pretty amazing. But at Super Potato, you did find something that we teased in a previous video. That's right, I bought this, and actually I'm gonna open it right now. Uh, Famicom had cartridges as well as discs. Is this baby Kinikuman? Uh, yeah, that's meat. So this is something we never got exposed to, and that is the discs. The closest thing that I got to a Famicom disc is that there was this, an attachment for the Super Nintendo that mm. uh, took floppy discs, mm -hmm. and I had that. And this was like way after like the N64 was out. It was just like this thing that uh, was handed down to me from like my dad's friend. And I was like, this is interesting, like putting discs into a game. But you know, if you had a Nintendo Famicom, it wouldn't be actually that out of the ordinary. And you can just put a craft single in there. Yeah. Same color. I just liked it for the cover art uh, because it's the five faded princes of Kanikaman. Right before we went to Japan, we stopped by Matt Dowdy's house and he had all these cool Japanese guidebooks mm -hmm. for NES games. And he had one for Trojan, which is one of his well, uh, game uh, arcade cabinets he, that he has. He has the cabinet of Trojan, but he also has the book mm. for Trojan. And that's a, a game that we both love. And when we went to Super Potato, they had all these guidebooks. And some of them were quite expensive, but I bought uh, Dr. Chaos because while the game was pretty terrible, the game art is phenomenal. I distinctly remember trying to draw this guy over and over again. It, it was also, it's such a bizarre title because it is kind of set in like Victorian era, but there's Uzis and submachine guns and handguns. It's almost like Castlevania meets uh, Robocop. Yeah, and as cool as this cover art is, the interior manual art is so ugly. Like. <laughs> Yeah, that looks pretty bad. They, they like, they can't decide how this guy's hair 
should look just terrible. <laughs> Dr. Chaos. You know he's a bad guy. While I don't speak Japanese, this is kind of a cool little artifact to have. And I just like little books that fit in pockets. Faxanadu. Faxandu. This was one of the most difficult games on the planet. Actually, I haven't opened this up yet. Let's, oh, it's got the manual. Yeah, see, we largely had just the gray. Huge cartridge. For right, the Nintendo. and what a missed opportunity because there was really some fantastic colors that could be done. Yeah, I don't know why we didn't explore more with the colored cartridges. So Faxandu was a really difficult game to play, but I remember seeing this sort of uh, sculpture that they built as the icon for this game. And I, I remember thinking, that's so fantastic. I would love to have an action figure of that. So finding old Japanese artifacts when it comes to video games might be hard to find in the States. Right. If there's somewhere else that we want to go oh, yeah. online, possibly, <laughs> yeah, to find anything oh, good. I yeah, I think so, buddy. Yeah, we got you covered. eBay Japan, we put together a bunch of links. Check them out in the description. You can go there. You can buy weird artifacts like this. And you can laugh at how much I paid, because I know I paid way too much. Specifically, check out Yamatoku Classic. They're the best. They are the best in the business. We got a link for you guys. Check it out. Buy this stuff. Yeah, they have everything from console accessories, as well as those Japanese exclusive titles that we didn't get here in the States. And we have it on a very reliable tip that they're just about to upload a bunch of new merchandise. Oh, yes. So be the first to check it out. So there you have it, folks. That was our trip number two to Japan. Hopefully we will go back very soon. Maybe not that soon. I'm still getting over jet lag. I'm ready to go back. I need me some more keshi. I need me some more gasha. Mm. I need some more sofubi. Mm. I need some more sushi mm. on the conveyor belt. That's the way to do it. That salmon broiled with the mayo on top. That's the way. Ah. That's the way. So good. Oh, oh the food is great. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the only thing left to say is pizza, pizza out. out.